Hello, welcome to Mab Talks. I'm uh, Mats. I've been thinking lately about um, how we interface with different control software, and particularly in cars. Now, uh, Tesla have gotten a lot of flack lately. Well, not a lot of, but people have been saying, oh, they've been moved. They moved too much of the. Uh, what used to be buttons onto the 15 inch screen in the Model 3 and they have a lot of things also in the Model S and other cars have as well, I mean including my own and I've been thinking about how you interact with things and how you maybe you shouldn't interact with it anymore or maybe the safest thing would be to just leave it alone now for instance, well, let me just show you how it looks in my car, in the Kia Soul. Here we have the buttons for the windows and the mirrors and placed... I'm sorry for this, uh, it's really not very easy to see that. Down there, under... Oh, come on. Here. Behind the steering wheel is a set of buttons for the fuel, uh, the uh, the charge door release and uh, how to adjust the the brightness of the instruments and so on. Among those buttons, the one that you see yellow there, that's the button for the heat the steering wheel, which is truly great. And here you have the climate controls and so on and well as you can see the placement of for instance the heating heat steering wheel button that's not very it's not practical design because you have to if you're driving and you're thinking oh it's a bit cold i want to put the heat steering wheel on well because it's very very comfortable it's one of those problems you didn't know you had been un until you have it then you can't really live without it um but it's placed you can't if you sit and you drive you can't really see it because maybe your arm is in the way or the steering wheel is definitely in the way so you have to look either over it or it's not very safe so they could have used they could have moved that for instance to a button on the steering wheel itself as the chevrolet bolt is which is good, or the Hyundai Ionic, which has it down on the center console. Also clever, because it's more practical to have it there, and you can see it, and it's more easy to use. And then you have the 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 um, mirrors and all that. That's, that's normal. It's sort of been like that for years. And the climate control buttons are also very nice. But, for instance, I have a lot of buttons on the steering wheel and so I have two or three buttons for almost every function. I have buttons on the steering wheel that just tell me that allow me to adjust volume and station and um, input on the infotainment system and radio or 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 um, telephone or whatever. But I also have buttons around the screen to do the same thing. And that's good, but it's it, it takes up a lot of space. And the thing with a physical button, it's... Well, it's physical, so it's, it's, it's there and it does one thing. And that's what it does forever. Now, let's say... Let's just see what Tesla has done here. They have moved the adjustment of the steering wheel and the side mirrors to the screen well that well they've moved the activation of it to the screen because and and and, and, and it's a two step uh two buttons step you push the menu but and then you go to the quick menu and then you push either adjustment of the steering wheel or the mirrors and then you use the scroll wheels on the steering wheel itself to adjust said object and um, yeah okay fine it's a bit fiddly but honestly how often do you adjust your steering wheel once normally once and then, then you forget it and this is also stored in your 
in the setting. So if you have your own, you, you put you put it on uh, on your profile, and everything is adjusted just the way you like it. Same goes for the for the side mirrors. So it, it it's not really an issue. It, you do it once, and. And that frees up buttons, that frees up sp space, so that you can do, and it, 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 it's a, you have to push the screen twice, but that's not really a big problem, it's just a new way of thinking. And we live in Norway, it's dark here, and, 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 and we've had the rule in Norway for, I don't know, for a long, long time, uh, on older cars, that when you put the ignition on and start the car, you had the driving lights were on, that would mean the, the um, low beam would just go on automatically when you started the car. So you, we, we didn't really have this, you have to turn the lights on, because they were always on, regardless. Uh, unless you physically turn them off. Uh, I don't really think you could do that very often either, because when they were in the off position, they were just on. And then you had to put them on if you wanted instrument lights, or you had to put them on if you wanted, you know, full beam. So, so, so we used to, not thinking, oh, I have to put the lights on because you know there was just work because it was mandatory, but regulated by law. And in comes the EU saying that then the DRLs came, al came along and so on and say, okay, you have to have daytime running lights and they have to illuminate and they have to work like this, blah blah blah. They also they only have to work, or rather, they only have to when you start the car, they only have to light. Uh, in the front of the car, not at the back. You have to brake lights, they go on when you brake. And that's okay for the most part of the world. Um, I guess. Maybe. Not in the darkness because you don't necessarily see the car. Yes, there are some reflectors, but it's not the same thing. Um, and that's okay. As long as you, I, A, remember to turn your lights on when it, when it goes dark, or you just leave the button in auto, which I have. But, there's a lot of people I see, a lot of cars I see that don't, they don't have the lights on. Some of them, and that's the most scary, only drive with the DRLs on, because they just turn the car on and drove, and they think, oh, I have lights, yeah, well, the DRLs do produce light, yeah, but they're not... They're not meant to be driving, driven on those lights alone, in the darkness. And they are LEDs, so they are very bright, so yes, you, I can see it as a car. But the lights at the back of the car are not ignited, which isn't always a very... that can be dangerous. So, and that's one of the buttons that you could just remove completely. You don't really need to have this stalker, to just, or, or the button, depending on what car you have. The Japanese have always mostly had it on the end of the stalk, and some of the Germans have had a thing, a button, or a, rather a um, turn switch, and just turn, twist around, a knob in a way. But why don't you just remove the entire light, uh, light switch completely? I mean, we have, like I said, mine is just left in auto, and when it goes dark, or dark enough, then the light switch is on. And when it goes light, they switch off, or they switch to the right position. The only thing I need to do is to adjust low and high beam. And yeah, fine. But the process of turning lights on or off is, in the name of traffic safety, and just to simplify things, because they don't have to think about it. Because many people don't know that it exists. Many, many people haven't been told, oh, there's an auto mode, I have to put it there. Why? When did that come? I didn't know. Did, 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 does it exist? Is it a problem? You know, because it, it's a relatively new thing and a lot of people don't know about it. I didn't even think of it uh, at the beginning. Well, I were when I got this, but... Um, and I consider myself a relatively technologically interested guy and, 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 also, and also, you know, car interested. Um... But if you don't know about it and you don't think about it and you don't really worry about it, you don't you don't do it and you don't it, it just can create the interest. And in today's situation where you have you, you have a light sensor that senses the amount of light hitting it and given given um, 
amounts of light, it will turn either on or off different systems, and that solved the entire problem. Get rid of the button, you don't need it anymore, it can take care of itself, probably better than you can. And with all these modern um, digital instruments, you have no, written, no need to turn the instrument light on or off either. That also takes care of itself. Same goes for, this is one of the things that Tesla has been criticized for. They removed most of the most of the vi Viper controls to the screen. Yes, they have. Uh, they have they have a they, they have a stock uh, onto which you can push the end of it, and the uh, wipers do one wipe, like this. When you push that stock, the Viper controls come up at uh, the bottom bottom of the screen. And you can adjust them from there to intermittent and low and fast and all that. And that's... Yeah, well, it can be a bit fiddly, but once you get used to it, I don't think it's a big problem. It's just different mode of thinking. And... No, what in the name of what happened? Oh, crying out loud. Sorry, charging problems. Right, I think, it got, I, think I got it going again. Things just suddenly stop charging here. I have no idea why. Anyway, where was I? Yes, uh, they removed the buttons and um, yeah, lights. Just put them on auto and put them. Um, make make a button go to the system button and lights and just put it on auto and you don't have to think of it again. If there's a problem. Yeah, well, you can adjust them on or off. It's, it, it's, it's not really, it's not supposed to be. And the same goes goes for the wi wipers, which is where I was going. Um, you have automatic wipers. I haven't that much experience with them, to be perfectly honest. Um, um, mostly, I guess, they work. That said, uh, Tesla's idea was instead of using a f standard Equipment, rain sensor, they decided, well, we have a lot of cameras. Why don't we use the cameras to run things? Well, no, they, they used about a good part of a year to figure out how to do that. And that works, mostly. <laughs> Apart from when it goes dark. How can a camera see water is mostly a clear liquid? Apart from now, it's actually snowing outside. But, you know... Um, the, oh, it's something on the screen. It's a windscreen. It's probably maybe rain. Maybe I should start the wipers. It's not necessarily ideal in the dark. And the rain sensor. Well, there is a rain sensor on the Nissan NV200 I use for work. And it doesn't, it doesn't function at all, ever. So, and that, its position is in the intermittent position on the wiper stock. Which means that the intermittent doesn't work either. So I have basically two, one, and then I have to go either full on or I have to just adjust it manually every time, which is very annoying. But if you could get this automatic wiper thing to work properly and don't break down, then why would you have that stock there? I mean, I think, I think this is what Tesla tries to do as well. Just rethink everything. Why on earth would you run um, use up a lot of real estate, a lot of space in the car for all these hard buttons that are meant to do one thing? Anyone who's seen the interior of a Porsche Panamera or Cayenne, great cars, driven a Cayenne once, it was several years ago now, but it was just an astonishing vehicle the way it the way it rides on, but that's 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 not what this is about. But there's buttons for every single function, everything, and that's okay, you say. Yeah, I know where it is. I know where all my buttons are in my in 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 my car, and I can find them in the dark with my eyes closed. Yeah, maybe you can find a few of them in the dark with your eyes closed. Um, but I can't. That said, they're mostly backlit, so it isn't an issue. Apart from the aforementioned um, uh, heated steering wheel button. I know it's somewhere behind there, but I don't, can't necessarily find it uh, 
entirely without looking. And that's a distraction, which is, uh, well, we've been through distractions. But another, I just got an Apple Watch, uh, basically just a few, well, bit that was about 24 hours ago. And that's, the great thing about it is that it is contextual. I can use it to run my Apple TV from it. And when you, it, it changes function depending on what you do with it, or where, where you are, what program you're running. So, if you've had this, I mean, I have a good touchscreen in this car, which runs, the maps in the Kia Hyundai are rather very good. Uh, there's a few stupidly designed dead, uh, blind alleys that you end up with, but that, that's mostly when you go deeper in the system. Um, I mean, but if you if you had a bigger screen, like for instance the 15 inch or the 17 inch, and you really designed it properly, and you have a button mentioned for climate, and you push climate to use climate con climate control is also one of those things that I don't really understand. You set climate normally once when you start driving. Maybe you adjust it a little bit. Uh, while you're on the go, but you don't normally adjust it very much. It's not like if you don't have a climb, um, automatic climate control, you 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 sort of have to adjust constantly, adjust the temperature depending on if it's sun outside or cold or whatever, you know, to adjust. Oh, now it's gone too hot. Now I have to adjust it down again to get just so. And um, but it, but with. Uh, when it's on auto, it's on auto. You set it maybe once, maybe twice on the trip. That's it. So why should I have a lot of buttons to adjust the fan speed and all that? I mean, I don't use that. But I use it to set... I set the temperature and then I just leave it. It's not a big issue. It's not a problem. It's not something I really would need staring me in the face all the time. I would rather, much rather have a small button Maybe maybe one hard button that's at climate. Push that and the whole screen turns into a big adjustment of your temperature and everything else and you adjust that and you're done. And if you have the screen real estate to build this uh, user interface properly, because that's what this builds down to, you good or bad interfaces. I've seen both. And a bad interface is much, much more dangerous than a, if you have a good good interface on a touch screen or or your mm audi mmi or your bmw or you know whatever if they're well designed and well thought through from a practical standpoint then they can be in many 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 times much easier to use and safer to use than a hard button that's placed immensely stupid and you don't really know what you're doing because you just have to feel your way around it I've seen that as well. So, and I don't really, I mean, and, and, and it's software based, so you can change it, you can change the look of it, you can change the, how, the way it works, the way it, how it controls things, and, and, and it all can be done over time, it can be better, as, as keeping up Tesla, because they're the only ones who've been thinking, thinking like this. Um, for the time being, uh, the others are coming, coming afterwards. Jaguar, among others, have some moved very, very much to touch, touch screens now. The new Valaris, I think, three of them. So, yes, hard buttons are very well for a few things, by all means. But if it's software based, like for instance, the buttons on the steering wheel. You have the scroll wheels on the Tesla, you can adjust them to do different things at different times. So you can, you don't have to look for a button, you can adjust it, just move, use one button to adjust what you want to do, and then do that. Finished. Done. Um, Jaguar has some of the same things. Their uh, steering wheel buttons, or the, they're actually not buttons, they're soft, they're sort of touch plates. Sort of like your the mouse pad or whatever, you know. and. They changed their 
contextual, so they change depending on what you're doing on the screen, which is really nice. And that's what I want to, you know, that's where I want to go. That's what I really think is the future, because it can. You can remove the amount of of physical um, interaction points. To use that word in the car, but those points you choose to have left, be they on the steering wheel or maybe uh, elsewhere, maybe for the passenger and so forth, can do so much more and over time can do can be adapted to you know whatever might be happening because they're, they're software based and they're linked into a system uh, that communicates with the entire car and that, that that's really brilliant so i'm sorry for the for the interruption and the rambling and the lighting conditions and also the um yeah uh, <laughs> a bit of a charge problem here uh, it's, it's it's okay now but uh, anyway that was my thoughts on uh, on why maybe why software and and uh, Uh, you know, why we use, um, the way we interact with the car is, is changing and it should change. And some things, because things change and change not necessarily fast in the car industry, but over time those changes won't be communicated down the chain to the next second or third or fourth owner and it won't necessarily know that it would be a good idea to have this function turned on or off or do that or whatever in a given situation and that could potentially lead to a problem uh, and when we now can automate a lot of things and automate it well and safely that, that that's paramount why do we have to keep doing the old things We don't, and we shouldn't really do that. That's my take on things. Thanks for watching. Do comment, subscribe, like, you know, all that stuff. Thanks. Bye.